SV Bonnie sent me this. Well, in actual full disclosure, SV Bonnie gave me this eyepiece for review. This is the SV171 Zoom eyepiece. Now, I'm not much of a visual user, but I asked the community, and you all said you'd be interested in an eyepiece review. So, my name is Rosine, and in this video, I'm going to share my feelings about this Zoom eyepiece. So, the SV171 is an 8 to 24 millimeter eyepiece with full multi coatings on it, FMC. I was actually sent this late August, but the weather has been that bad, I've rarely had much time in order to be able to use this. However, now I've used it with the Stella Lyra 8 inch Cassegrain for the moon and Mars, as well as my Skywatcher 80 ED as well for the moon and a few DSOs. The eyepiece is well made, has a nice feeling in the hand. There is a bit of a rattle if you shake it by your ear, but I suspect that is the seven elements in four groups for the zoom functionality on it. The entire body of the eyepiece is made of metal and all the rubber fixtures actually feel like a much higher grade and more premium kind of feel to them than the price tag would have indicated. Using the eyepiece is pretty straightforward really. It's an eyepiece, you put it into the focus tube, you put your eye to it, you focus and you enjoy the night sky. Now one nice thing about it is as you change the focal length, the eyepiece itself doesn't get any longer or shorter. Everything moves inside. There is a rotating eye cup on it, which I'll get to later, but overall it's a bit bulky, nice weight to it. I'd say it's about two and a half, three inches long. It takes up my entire hand. On the other end of it, the nose cone end of it, there is a 1.25 inch drive on it that accepts standard 1.25 inch filters. Slowing over with the Skywatcher 80ED and looking at the Andromeda Galaxy M31 with the zoom eyepiece was Real good fun, it was really enjoyable. At 20 millimeters, I could see the entire galaxy in the eyepiece. Stopping it down to 15 millimeters gave me that bit more detail that I was after. It was a very enjoyable experience using it. So then over to the Hercules cluster M13 and going down to 10 millimeters as well. Nice full eyepiece of stars, just twinkling jewels in the night sky and no noticeable chromatic aberration that I saw. Now that might be down to the telescope or also the optics in the eyepiece, or they might be working together for that. I'm not too sure. And then once I put the eyepiece into the F12 Cassegrain, the Stella Lyra 8 inch, it became a planet killer. The zoom functionality and things like that, just really great. Good views of Mars, nice and resolved. The atmosphere made it very difficult to really get any good details whilst viewing it though. Slowing over to the moon, however, was very useful because you could zoom out a bit more and see more of the lunar surface. And if you really wanted to look at that crater or that surface detail, you could just punch down to eight millimeters and really fill the frame with it. It was a nice, it made for a really simple viewing experience because there was no swapping eyepieces. You just went one and you changed your focal length. And it was that useful actually. My partner was able to come out and enjoy the moon with me also. Now she doesn't really do astronomy. She likes the moon, but just the ease of this setup meant she was able to just stand at the eyepiece, zooming in and out and enjoying the surface details as she desired. Neither the lunar filter, but that just screwed straight onto the end of the nose piece, as I said, the 1.25 inch standard threads. Now going back to this sliding eye cup that I mentioned earlier, I wasn't too sure what this was about. So I reached out to SV Bonnie and asked, what is this for? And they told me it was for adjusting the exit pupil of the eyepiece. That is how far away you can be, your eye can be from the eye cup and still see a nice image. What this does is compensates for people who have to wear corrective eyewear like glasses or contact lenses. It means you can adjust the exit pupil to reach a comfortable viewing distance. So that's a pretty nifty little feature in my opinion. That's really forward thinking for people who have to wear glasses. Now, some people don't like zoom eyepieces. Their argument is that they are never as crisp or as clear or as much contrast as a dedicated prime eyepiece, prime being fixed focal length, like a 10 millimeter. This is because that 10 millimeter eyepiece will have less optical elements of glass in it, most likely, all of which will be higher quality and optimized for that one focal length. It's like a prime camera lens often is sharper than a zoom camera lens. Now the zoom eyepiece has more optical layers in it, which could possibly degrade the image at the eyepiece, the view at the eyepiece, because just more layers of glass to go through, more degradation, especially if that glass isn't of high quality. 
but it also slides so everything moves inside of the eyepiece which can also further compromise the visual quality at the end of the eye cup so that's an argument against zoom eyepieces that they never are going to be as clear sharp as a dedicated an argument for zoom eyepieces if you are a complete beginner or like me who's primarily an astrophotographer who just enjoys looking every now and again you have a lot of different focal lengths in one unit like i mentioned earlier about looking at the moon it was just great and it's a lot more handy just twisting the eyepiece and and um refocusing then popping this out and changing the filter and then putting that back in and oh yeah that's nice now i want to look at that creator or do it all again for me a zoom eyepiece streamlined that entire viewing experience and i didn't really notice it being of lesser quality than i've used with other prime eyepieces before so i quite liked the zoom eyepiece so yeah, if you're really interested in your visual astronomy and you've got wonderful high quality optics and a wonderful high quality observing instrument then you may not be interested in the sv171 but like i said like me an astrophotographer or just people who go out every now and again to have a bit of a tour around the sky then the sv171 could be a good eyepiece for you if that's all you want just something every now and again pop it in yep that's nice and then get on about your evening it works for me at the time of the video the eyepiece cost 59 pounds 99 pence on ebay and that might seem a bit steep for one eyepiece now if you are against zoom eyepieces then that is 60 pounds down the drain isn't it but like me like i've already mentioned this several times if you just want an eyepiece to enjoy the night sky especially coming into the winter season with well-known cluster uh, well-known targets like the andromeda galaxy the orion nebula and things like that this could be a worthy investment so to wrap it up it may not be as sharp as a prime eyepiece those fixed focal length ones however i'm going to enjoy having the sv171 in my toolkit for those occasional times i want to look at the moon or i want to look at a deep sky object because from time to time i enjoy a bit of visual astronomy if you are a sole dedicated uh, visual astronomer and you want the very best that you can get maybe you want to overlook the sv171 and get a set of prime lenses but thanks for sv bonnie for sending this to me and you know any bias i may have because of that but i'm looking forward to every now and again popping this into my telescope and exploring the night sky thanks very much for watching everybody if you enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up and if you didn't like the video well you know what to do and consider subscribing for more reviews such as these and let me know down in the comments where do you stand on zoom versus prime i'd be love to hear your thoughts about it and are you a visual astronomer or like me an astrophotographer who likes to look every now and again drop me a comment down below and with that all that's left for me to say is clear skies everyone keep looking up keep them cameras clicking and keep the knife pieces focused apparently see you later